What's going on, Swim fans? Welcome to the Ask a Swim Pro Show. My name is Ferris Savetti, co-founder and CEO of My Swim Pro. And today we've got a special guest for you, Madison Koss, world championship medalist, superstar professional swimmer, joining us for the Ask a Swim Pro Show. How are you doing? Ferris, I'm doing great. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. Right on. So tell us a little bit about your swimming background and how you got to where you are today. Um, well, I started swimming with my club team in Lubbock, Texas, when I was four years old. Um, my sister swam, so I just kind of jumped in the pool out of boredom. Ended up loving the sport. I, you know, I still did all the other sports growing up, but I loved it enough to be offered a spot on a college team. I, so I swam for the University of Texas at Austin for four years, and now I will have been swimming professionally for four years this summer. That's awesome. And you've gone to the world championships, you've medaled, you've been a professional swimmer ups and downs in the career. Uh, maybe walk us through uh, some of the highlights that you've had in the last few years. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been, you know, I always say like, the road to success is never linear. So it's definitely been up and down. Um, but, you know, some of the highlights, I'll say my senior year at Texas was probably the most special. Um, one of the most special memories I have with swimming, just that team atmosphere and that camaraderie that you have is there's, there's nothing like it. And, you know, you get bits and pieces of it with team USA, but you really only get it on summer international trips and things like that. So it's really special to have a full year of that. Um, I have, you know, great teammates, great coaches. Um, I'm very thankful to still be with those coaches, different teammates. Now, you know, I've been, since I've been post-grad for four years, I've seen a completely new, um, class or four new classes of, um, freshmen come in. So that's very interesting. Um, but another, some other highlights would be 2017 world championships. Um, I had a great time there. Uh, that was in Budapest. It was absolutely incredible. I had so much fun. Um, let's see short course worlds in, let's see 16 that maybe that was um that was another one of my most favorite swimming memories you know all the nationals all all the things that training camps everything that's gone along with it it's really been um an incredible journey totally so you the events that you swim are very grueling the training you have to be good at every stroke you've got to have the base you've got to have speed um from a training perspective i'm curious what is like the hardest set that you've ever done or workout uh, break it down for us what do you do yeah, I am training practices. There, there's like something else. We always call them our mega death days. Um, <laughs> that's when we know we're going to get the, the hardest workout of the week. And it's usually my favorite workout of the week. Um, let's see my, I would say, I always say the hardest set I did every year. It was in high school. So all the way back, you know, um, 2010, 2013, um, we would do every year we do a 4,000 IM for time at my, on my club team. Uh, and that was probably one of the more grueling sets I've ever done. And, you know, every year we'd have the record from, you know, the, the fastest time ever swam. And so you'd really be going for that record. And it was just 4,000 yards straight of just, I am in, in, in misery, but if, in the end, you know, you finish it and it's always very rewarding. So that was, that's probably one of the harder ones. Oh my God. 4,000. I am for time. I, that sounds yeah. like 4,000 survival. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of what it turns into. Yeah. Like how, how fast could you, get, would you remember what times you'd go on that? Um, no, I mean, I remember like sub hour, but I don't, I don't really remember exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and I, I was also in high school, so it, I think it was really just like a toughness contest. Yeah. So you would put that up against, you know, one hour of I am swimming compared to even even now like what, what what would be I guess maybe the equivalent of like something you do more I don't, maybe you're still doing 4,000 IMs for time <laughs> oh no 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 <laughs> um let's see like the other day we did nine 200 IMs to send one to three four to six you know um seven and nine and you had to get better by chunk um though that was pretty hard we even do like even shorter sets so one of the sets that Eddie has us do every year is 2050s IM um, five of each stroke on the 35. So that one, the breaststroke, especially that, that gets really hard. Um, so yeah, we, I, we usually don't do that big of, um, I am sets. However, they are more intense. So the intensity is higher. Um, quantity is lower. Do you like training? I am long course or short course? Uh, long course. <laughs> yeah. I really, I mean, I am short course is just an underwaters game. So, mm -hmm. yeah, totally. I guess uh, to that note, like what advice do you have for someone who's trying to take their IM to the next level, whether it's long course or short course? 
Um, it's all in the transitions. So it's fine. You can be great at all four strokes, but if you can't put them back to back to back, I mean, you're not going to have a great IM. So that's really the IM days that I really feel like I get the most out of it. There's a lot of transition work. So yesterday we did like hundred fly fast into a hundred back or fly back into a hundred back into a hundred back, you know, so making sure you're hitting all the strokes, but also doing them back to back. So you're, you're getting, you're doing breaststroke, but you're doing it right behind the backstroke. So you're fatigued like you would be in an actual race. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Transition. I am very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so you are training really hard, even if you're not doing 4,000 IMs, you're doing high intensity, shorter stuff. Uh, so you get breaking, broken down. So I'm curious, do you drink coffee in the morning to kind of get the day going? Oh, I have to, <laughs> there's no other way I'd be awake for some of these morning practices. Yeah. So like what, what does the morning routine look like and, and throw coffee into the mix? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, um, wake up brush my teeth, all that, let my dog out. And then while he's out, yeah, we have a little backyard area. He goes out, I go in, grab my coffee. I don't like brewing coffee in the morning. So I actually have these little cans of rice coffee. That's just great. You just crack them open. You bring that on the go and I pretty much sip on it until I hit the water. And that, that really helps wake me up, get my body going, my blood flowing, um, get my mind sharp and alert for practice. And it, it, it definitely helps um, with those morning practices. And especially, I think, you know, we've been doing some harder practices in the morning to prepare for the Tokyo um, lineup where there is finals in the morning. So it, I think it's really key to be getting up and going in the mornings here and preparation for you know, what it will be like in Tokyo. Yeah. I was actually going to ask you about that because the morning afternoon routine is sort of being flipped on its head when you have something like the Tokyo Olympics. And I know, I think Beijing was like that in 2008. Mm -hmm. So I guess, how are you preparing for that where, you know, you're going to have the finals and prelims kind of mixed from what you're used to? Yeah. Yeah. It, it is definitely different because um, in the past we've had our main training sessions at night and, you know, we've been flipping it around a little bit. A lot of times, sometimes on Tuesdays, Thursdays, every Tuesday, Thursday, we'll come in 11 to one. So that's right around when we'd be, we'd be racing maybe a little bit earlier. Um, but I, I definitely think it's helped, you know, in the past I've been more of a final summer, but just recently we had the mission Viejo pro swim series um, where we actually had finals in the morning and I was really nervous about that. And, you know, but I think this whole year of training and preparing for that, um, really helped me do well at that meet and be on for finals and go faster in the morning than I, than I was at night. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I have a question, uh, following up on uh, rise, I guess, what about it do you feel benefits you the most, uh, in your routine? Um, it, I mean, just the way it's I, nothing, you know, the way it's able to wake my body up. And I think a big thing about why people swim fast in the morning is their internal core temperature is higher in the afternoon. I mean, in the morning. And so it really helps get my internal core temperature up, wake me up, wake, get my body going. Um, so that I am able to swim fast and do what I need to do in practice and also stay sharp too. It's one thing to just go through practice and like kind of slop around and doing your strokes, but it's helped me stay mentally on my game, thinking about what I need to do in my strokes, the little things I'm thinking about, you know, even when I'm swimming breaststroke, um, just those, even the, the little details, it's, it's really helped elevate. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Madison. I really appreciate uh, the time to learn more about your swimming journey and how you're preparing for 2021 Olympics. Wish you the best of luck. And we'll link all of your uh, Instagram and, and all that good stuff down below in the description for people to check out and give you a follow. So thanks again and wish you the best of luck. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Right on. Take care. Happy swimming. I'm Madison Cox, and this is how I rise.